Right, thank you Dr. Tiru for the introduction. <clears throat> Firstly, I'd like to extend my sincere thanks to Dr. Kwan for having me here this morning and also Sister Li Leng by faith for having me here this morning to minister the Word of God. I came to this church somewhere 2017 or 2018 when I was asked to bring a group of young people to be part of the global worship. And that time I was ministering in Nilai. I brought the group Urban Nation. I was ministering to international students from ET University in Nilai. So I brought a group of uh, students here. They were from Indonesia, from Philippines, and so on, to be part of the global worship team in 2017 or 2018. Right? I just want to just introduce myself with a very uh, short introduction. There's a timeline of my ministry because I'm just, uh, this is the first time I'm ministering here, so that you know from the background where I come from, pretty fast. Uh, I started when I graduated in 1991, Tiru, and I started my career in the banking industry. I was a public bank uh, staff there. I was public bank for 15 years. Started from, you know, graduate training and my final uh, <clears throat> position while I was a senior trainer in the bank, the public bank. And at that time, I was 42 years old, and I had my wife here, Raja Moni, right? And I had three boys, 26, 24, and 22. One is here, and two more is in the uh, UK. They just finished their studies, they are working there. Don't want to come back. They are uh, finishing their, I think, their student uh, visa. So, going back to where I started in public bank 15 years, and there I started my ministry. <coughs> ministry always starts with, not when you go, when you're free, then you do ministry. You, are, you start your ministry when you're busy. I always tell my children, you study, you do your ministry. You work, you do your ministry. Then you'll be on the straight line with God. So it's not a time where you'll be free to do ministry. So 15 years when I was in public bank, and there I was uh, serving in the, especially the leadership in the church, in, uh, in Grace Assembly PJ under Apostle Pastor Henry uh, Ramaya. I was with him for 15 years, and thereafter at the age of 42, God called me to be uh, full-time, to go into full-time. So in 22007, when I was 42 years old, and you know when you're in the bank, when you're a senior trainer, Everything is free. Parking is free. When I go to the office, I go to the cafeteria. My breakfast is free. 10 o'clock, they bring the coffee to you. Yeah, it comes to lunchtime, your lunch is free. 3 o'clock, you have your tea break. Do you want to resign from that job? Everything is covered. But that's the time God calls you. That's when God called me. When I was 42, at the mid-age, you know, and think about three boys, how to raise them up and so on. That's when I just gave myself and said, Lord, I will obey. And that's when Pastor under Apostle Henry told me, okay, now you go and serve in uh, Grace uh, Assembly in Clang. Grace Assembly Clang is the mother church for all the Grace churches. And it is like a big a super tank. All right? Like it is been, it, it is, if, if you can serve in Grace Clang, you can serve any part of the world. Because that's the greatest warfare you'll face. <laughs> greatest warfare, I tell you that. All right. <clears throat> so God kept me there for eight years. My training was for eight years in the full-time ministry, overseeing the youths, youth director, overseeing the young adults, overseeing the marketplace ministry. We have a marketplace ministry. So sometimes they have challenges in the office and so on. I have to go visit them, pray for them in the office and so on and then conduct a, a marketplace a ministry, get the speakers to speak to the people, the congregation, Grace Assembly. And thereafter, I had outreach where I to, uh, normally I, I was overseeing the young people. So part of the leadership training, I'll take them to Montfort Boys Town and Boys Girl in Batu Tiga there. I minister in Montfort Boys Town and Girl there. I take my wife along and we take all the youth, young leaders to minister to the young people as part of their training. And also, apart from that, I was overseeing the cell group. The cell group, we have about 28 to 29 cell group. I was in charge to take care of the leadership training and so on. The zone pastor, the zone leader, the cell leader, the cell intern, the cell host, everything. 
All right, so the church was run by the cell groups, ushering and everything. And then after I was eight years there, and then God told me, now <coughs> your full-time training is over. Now you have to leave. Leave the church and go without salary. I said, God, how do you leave? You serve without salary. No more churches. I don't want the church to support you anymore. And I want you to stand in your own. Learn to stand in your own. And that's when I told my apostle, and he said, okay, God calls you, you have to go. So I had one house, so I sold that house, and then I started a ministry in Eli, all right, to rent the place and to, and the ministry was especially to minister to the university students. So I was just about in the university in Nilai, and I was about maybe about 200 meters down there in Malati Square, if you know Nilai there, Malati Square. And there I started my ministry there. It was a tent making ministry. And then it was under Genesis Learning Center. I started Genesis Learning Center, my wife. And what we do is during the weekdays, I teach English. I teach English for the working adults. I teach soft skills training. I teach character training. And also my boys, my elders will teach uh, uh, the piano, uh, keyboard and guitar lessons. My second boy teach drum. All right, to raise up money to run the center and to run the church. It comes to Saturday, we clean it up, and Sunday we have service. All right, for the young people from the university, about 30 to 40 of them. That was my ministry for five years. So when I finished my five years, God said, enough, you can close up. I want you to move now into as an itinerary speaker because you fulfilled the training. All right, that was my part of timeline in training the ministry. So today I'm just still young, 59 years old, all right? <clears throat> so I just go minister and to anyone who wants to be ministered to, all right? So that's my timeline. Now this morning, this morning without wasting time, you know, when you are in God's timeline, you don't want to waste time. My <clears throat> topic today, is reigniting our divine purpose. Reigniting our divine purpose in Christ, as I put in these last days. It is also important that the day we started to receive, when we receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, that we have a purpose. That every one of us has been there. We say, I will serve the Lord all the days of my life. You want to do so many things for God. But as you get older and older and older, you get married, you get a first child, you get a second child, your purpose begin to, you know, in the, in the economic terms or in the business mindset, you begin to change the goalposts. You begin to change the goalposts until you do not know where you are. You know, many Christians, especially the young generation, they do not know what they want in life. The moment they say they don't know what they want in life, there's already a red flag because they can go to the left or they can go to the right. And it's also important, the question when someone is looking for, you know, a, a marriage partner, they do not know what to do. They don't know how to find a marriage partner. When someone's looking for a job, you say, what, what do you like to do? I do not know. I'll just do whatever God opened the door. But inside of them, they don't know. They're just depending on God to open. And that is also important that even after marriage, the greatest conflict in the marriage, they do not know what they want, in fact. Those who are married, you'll know you. All right, all keeping quiet. Huh? Those married, you have to ask the marriage people. They have a lot of experience shouting and quarreling and blaming each other and so on. You know, I'm no different than you. Alright, I'm a pastor also, we are human. We go through also. Alright, so I, I'm not a super religious person there. No, you don't be super religious. Then you call the, you carry the religious spirit with you. Alright. So we have everything. But the one thing I learned from my experience, my ministry and so on. This purpose, you have to hold on. You have to be so anchored. No matter what happens, You'll never let go of that purpose until the day we lose or leave this earth for that matter. 
So this morning's message is important, and I pray that you'll be able to catch something before you leave. And I'm, I always tell the Lord, through my years and experience in, 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 in ministry, don't depend on people. Don't trust people. All right? Trust the Holy Spirit. So my time is always led by the Holy Spirit. I remember one prophecy. They should always be in the right place at the right time. So I pray that today I'm not here by accident. All right? I'm not here just to fill in the blanks. That's to serve, that's to give, uh, release some message and just go back. But I pray that it will hit something. And the book of Hebrews chapter 4, 12 says that the word of God will penetrate through our spirit, soul and body. Then it brings that divine healing. It brings the divine deliverance. It brings the divine change, transformation. If the word of God does not go and penetrate to our spirit, soul and body, there will be, there will be no change. And many a times that people go into a church and come back, come out of the church and say, hey, nothing, nothing happened to me. And this morning I pray that it will bring a change in your spirit, soul and body. Now the scripture is taken from the book of Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 to 25. And the word says, I say then, this is by Paul, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand. Just as I also told you in the time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the spirit, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. Lord, I just come before you this morning. Jesus, lift up each and every one of us in your hands. May ask, Father, in Jesus' name, as we come before you, the King of Kings. We say thank you, Lord, for some of us. We were not be able, we were not supposed to be here, but we are here. We wanted to cancel our, atten our attendance this morning for this service, but somehow, Holy Spirit, you brought us here. And dear Lord Jesus, I come before you. Confessing, renouncing, repenting from all our sins. And we rededicate our lives to you this morning. And I ask Holy Spirit minister to the water recesses of every spirit, soul and body this morning. And may you bring forth the divine desires of each and every one seated here. The Lord in Jesus name I pray that you will activate that healing, that deliverance. And also every breakthroughs financially in the workplace, in the business areas, Lord, in relationship, in the marriages, and also in the families, in the ministry, and the church of Strongman Life Assembly this morning, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now the scripture here is taken. We see Paul doing a comparison led by the Spirit, and he straightway did not, he just straightway said the work of the flesh. <clears throat> the greatest contention on this earth is not between two persons. The greatest contention is within each and every one of us. World War I, World War II would never happen. Because the greatest contention within Hitler is not between him and someone else. It's between Hitler and Hitler inside of him. 
the greatest attention is the greatest enemy is not someone else so this morning i just want to revisit now this is the olden kind of preaching those days in 70s and 80s all preachers will emphasize on this and they live by this and this is one of the most fundamental and also the most foundational teaching that every believer must know so that you are not moved away from that foundation it's a very simple topic today but you see that diagram it is red the spirit soul the green and the body is blue but you see the important thing is not only a difference in the color but a difference in the size the difference in the diagram you see the spirit all right is not there's not saying that the body is not important the soul is not important the spirit is not important the diagram talks about the order the order the priority which must be given the first priority so which one do you think has to be given the first priority here the spirit all right spirit followed by the soul and the body because this is the greatest management in the christian walk if we don't know how to manage our spirit soul and body we will never have a successful christian living you'll always be doubting yourself you'll always be thinking i'm not contented i'm not happy now going back to galatian chapter 5 verse 16 to 25 i just separated this and you don't see the word flesh you don't see the word flesh because when paul spoke about this in galatian chapter 5 verse 16 to 20 i just broke it down spirit galatian chapter 5 verse 16 to 18 verses 20 to 25 He was talking about the fruit of the spirit, but when he talk about the flesh, we always know the flesh is the body. But the body, when he spoke about the body, he said the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh. What he meant here was the body is always a slave. The body is a slave. The body will take instruction. When you give the body instruction, then only you take instruction. So the spirit gives the body instruction it will take instruction. So when Paul said the works of the flesh he was telling that the, when the body takes instruction from the soul then you'll run very wild. When the, bo- when, the, when the when the body takes instruction from the soul what is the soul the soul comprises of the mind the will and the emotion. So when the mind the will the emotion the soul controls the body then you see the body as what we read just now all right and all the sins that takes place in our lives now this is very very important when paul spoke about this in the book of galatians he was referring to what jesus also said now whenever i prepare a slide is only 30% information in the slide 70% comes from the holy spirit All right i don't i don't depend on technology technology cannot bring an empty all right technology cannot bring an empty don't depend too much on technology now when paul spoke about this he he already was speaking something jesus spoke right when jesus spoke in the book of matthew chapter 26 matthew chapter 26 verse 41 is not on the screen there jesus said the spirit is willing but the body is weak the flesh is weak the, the the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak and when jesus said this he was talking about an experience he saw himself and we also can learn from that experience that when jesus spoke that there was a few hours before he was arrested and who was with him his disciples what were the disciples doing Jesus was praying right before he was arrested he was praying one hour and was he was he was praying and there was Peter and Peter poor Peter and all the other disciple while Jesus praying they were sleeping all right so that is what the conclusion when Jesus said the spirit is willing what what do you mean the spirit is willing that the spirit wants to go forward 
The spirit wants to go forward, but something is stopping the spirit from doing what it's supposed to do. And then Jesus said, the flesh is weak. So because when the, when the spirit right, is, is willing, but you can't do what it's supposed to, someone else is being activated. And that is the soul. And when the soul was activated, and you see the flesh became weak, because the flesh was taking its instruction from the soul instead of taking instruction from the spirit. And it's also important as Christians that few hours before Jesus was crucified, the disciples were sleeping. Now this is also important, the prophetic. In the last days, this is, we are telling you, Jesus is going to come, Jesus is going to come. But many will be sleeping. Many will be sleeping and that's a warning. That's why Jesus said, watch and pray that you do not fall into temptation. Watch and pray you don't fall into temptation because the example is already inside the Bible in the book of Matthew. A warning to each and every one of us. When he said sleep, not only a physical sleep. When the spirit sleeps, we are in trouble. Because when the spirit sleeps, who's who is going to take over? The soul. That's the reason why the confrontation, the spirit lusted after the flesh, the flesh after the spirit. There is a divine F1 race going on within each and every one of us. Even at this point of time, even at this point of time, there's a race going on within our spirit and soul. Who's taking over? The soul wants to take over the spirit. And the spirit that you keep quiet, I'm in charge. And that's the reason why the baptism of the Holy Spirit is also important. And don't live by the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but we need to be infilled with the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. If I read the Word of God, it is not ministering my spirit, and then it's going into my soul. And that's the reason why we see the, the, the many conflicts that happen in ministry, in churches, between brothers and sisters, between churches and churches, is because the conflict of race started inside. We don't know how to manage the spirit, soul, and body. And you begin to misinterpret the brother, misinterpret the church, or misinterpret the, the, in your workplace, you'll misinterpret. Because the working place in the world out there is everything moving by the soul. But you are there, all right? Sometimes unknowingly, you also get carried away with your soul. Because you're so afraid something will happen if you don't follow, your, if you don't follow the soul. The soul eagle want to take over the spirit. And as a banker myself, I know. And I had this problem. And this was one of the staff. He was in gangsterism, part working in the, in, the, in, in the head office. And the director could not take care of him, send him to the branch. He came to my branch. All right, I was obviously in charge of one of the uh, remittance and the fixed deposit and so on. So there was one transaction of about 50,000. The staff did it with the with the with the with the customer. And whenever you send the money out overseas, that you have to find sign the form P payment. Alright, you have to sign it and send it to Bank Negara who did this transaction and so on. But we can two people can sign. Either I sign it on behalf of the customer, or the customer is they, they themselves have to sign it. And what happened is I, I knew the staff. I knew whatever he'll do in the, in, in, the, in the transaction. I said, Danny, I'm not going to sign this. You make sure the customer sign this. Because all the while, all the officers in the branch were so scared of Danny. But Danny is a gangster. Right? Danny drives uh, GTR. All right? His salary is only 900 There's a clerk. But the clerk cannot drive a GTR. All right? And he parks there. And then, you know, manager comes at 9 o'clock. We, we are in the office. I'm in the office by 7.30 in the morning. Then he comes at 9.50, 9.30. Manager have to use time. Everyone have to use time. Then he does not use the time. He said, oh, put two more buttons. And then, okay, everyone keep quiet. All right, no one. So that was Danny. So whatever Danny does, officers all get frightened. Then I said, Danny, I'm not going to sign this. So I was following up with this form. I said, Danny, where's the best? Where's the signature? I need to sign, sign it to Ben Nagara. Oh, then it's after the two weeks, I said, if you don't give it to me, I'm going to report it to the manager. So that's what, he did not give it to me, report it to the manager, all right, they did an inquiry. But the thing is, after I spoke to the manager, then he came to my table, 
and he hits my table. He said, Mr. Philip, you're not afraid about your family? All right, that's the guts he has. All right, and he's part of the new, you know, the, the, because we have a branch, our staff, over 90 of them. So that's how Danny comes and threatens you. But my, I went and reported my manager, and then we caught the spread. He was on CCTV, and some of the staff, the dad, you heard what he was telling me, threatening me, and so on. But the key thing is, reported him, and then after a <coughs> few months, we got rid of him. But the key thing is not about that, but the kind of uh, decision you have to make in the marketplace. Sometimes you'll be surrounded, that things will try to push you, threaten you, to a point you may lose your job, to a point you may lose your, your, your increment in your bonus and so on. Are you going to stand and are you going to live by your spirit? What's the conviction? Are you going to take the step? That's the greatest persecution today. When you talk about the last day's persecution, it's a physical persecution, but today we're living with that, not that physical persecution, the persecution that we will be, you know, we be convicted by the spirit. Or oh, are you living by your soul? And that's why you never have that, 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 uh, that, that the, the, the satisfaction in your walk with God. If this matter is not settled, you'll always be lost in your pursuing, in your purpose in Christ as a follower of Christ. Now you know that we talk about a follower of Jesus, all the disciples, all, right, all of them were living by the Spirit, all right, but at this, at times they, they were not living in the Spirit, you can't blame them, because when Jesus was with them, they were not fully in the Spirit, they still had the Spirit, but the thing is they were not baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because what Peter, when he denied Jesus three times, now the problem with Peter was he was not living by the Spirit. He had always been in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was in the wrong place when Jesus was arrested. Where was Peter supposed to be? Peter was supposed to go with all the disciples. Jesus said, don't follow me. But Jesus, but what Peter did? Peter followed Jesus. He went to the courtyard, a place where he was not supposed to, supposed to be. And he denied Jesus three times, right? Before the rooster crowed. And then after that, he cried. He said, why? Uh? In the first place, he should not be crying. In the first place, he should not be in the court in the first place. He was trying to be a hero. Sometimes all of us trying to be a hero, right? We do the extra things for Jesus. And after they end up, I am uh, disappointed. Alright, I, uh, I did this for Jesus, you know, you know, see what I got in return. Alright, I got betrayed. Alright, something happened. Because we try to overdo things. Just like Peter. Now going to this. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 to 17. And now this is the whole history of the spirit, soul and body. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 to 17, it says, And the Lord God commanded the man say of every tree of the garden you may freely eat now when god spoke to adam and eve all the trees you can eat that means you're talking about the tree of life the tree of life you can eat everything but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in the day you eat of it you shall surely die now when god spoke to adam and eve you shall surely die so what happened when God created Adam and Eve from the spirit, soul, and body, they were complete in this. Right from where we see the spirit, the red, must embody the soul, then only the body. Now there's a divine order. As you see in the book of Genesis 2 7, it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breath into his nostrils, and breath of life, and man became a living being. So when God breathed upon Adam, he breathed the Spirit of God and made him complete. That where he was filled with the Spirit, he had the soul, and he had his body. And that was the total embodiment of the completion of the creation of man. So we see it's also important that positioning of the Spirit must always be the king. If we, do not, if we do not give kingship to a spirit man, 
then the soul will take over so the soul is known as the servant the soul must always be be the servant to the spirit and the body is flat the slave so the but the, the spirit is the king the soul is the the, the uh, uh, what is this the servant and the body is the slave that is how the position should be whenever i'm not telling i'm not talking about the soul is not important the mind the will is emotion is all important so whenever i receive a message into my spirit so into my soul i have to bring it back into my spirit and to process it and is it from the lord or not from the lord then you'll be able to understand why you get confused you don't get confused you know how to build and how to use this process that's been built within each and every one of us now the problem was the fall of adam and eve in genesis 3 that chapter 3 verse 6 to 7 so when a woman saw the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise she took off its fruit and ate she also gave to husband with her and he ate then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig trees together and made themselves covering now god told them don't eat from tree of knowledge of good and evil but this yet the end now what happened in this conversation all right what happened with adam and eve spirit soul and body remember when he read when god told them that when you eat all right you will die now what happened here in that conversation if you if I go back to this in the conversation between Adam and Eve, sorry, between the devil and Eve, when the devil was talking to Eve, the devil knew, the devil knew Adam and Eve, all right, the devil knew exactly, all right, how Adam and Eve were created and everything. So what the devil did is in the, in the speaking, right, when the devil spoke to Eve, the devil was attacking Eve's body. The body is the most weakest among the spirit, soul, and body. The weakest among the three is the body. So the devil attacked Eve's body and told her, you see this fruit? If you eat it, all right, that means you see, you touch it, and you eat it, all physical sex. So the devil was attacking your body. And then after that, the devil attacked and defeated Eve's body. Then the devil went after the soul. So the devil in the conversation said, that you want to be smart, all right? If you want to be smart, when you talk about smart knowledge, it talks about a mind. And Eve wanted to be smart, and the devil attacked her soul, defeated the soul, and finally the devil attacked his spirit. The devil attacked the spirit, said that you only want to be like God, like God. Now, devil's strategy is that. So the devil hates the devil hates our body you know why because we are made in the image of God because we are made in the image of God he hates us he hates our body and he'll do everything to touch the, our bodies first the moment you leave the moment you let go of the body listening to what the devil that's what will happen to us so we see that in this conversation, God said you will die. But did Adam and Eve die after they ate the forbidden fruit? They did not die physically, right? Because Adam lived after that 930 years. And you see that Adam's, Adam's soul, his mind, his mind did not die. Because after that he began to name all the flowers and the plants and the animals and so on. Did Adam's willpower die? No, because we see in Adam's generation, where we see the willpower to sin was so great until the flood came. And they're talking about emotion. Did Adam's emotions die? No, his emotion did not die to the point where there was hatred, there was anger in his generation, in his descendants, where we see Cain killed Abel in that sense. But what died? The spirit died. The spirit died. Right? Because up, up, what's the evidence of the spirit died? Because after that, after eating the fruit, then they, they realized that they were naked. 
the spirit died. You know, it's also important. In the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 45, where Paul said, The first Adam was a living soul. Living soul. The first Adam. Now, what it means is, today, even after you are saved, the soul is still living, right? You don't, you don't take away the soul. The soul is still living. But the soul has the atomic nature, the sinful nature running in our blood. But Paul concluded in the book of 1 Corinthians 15 45, he said, All right, the last Adam, which is Jesus, he comes with a quickening spirit. The quickening spirit is the one that we are lacking today. You know, sometimes you go through, go, go and exercise and so on to activate your body, but we do not know how to activate our spirit. We don't, our spirit is not quickened. It's like, you know, you have, you have a fuse in your house, the electricity. Right? When, the, when the voltage goes high, the fuse cuts off. And the, the spirit within us must be like that. When something is coming, that is sin, the spirit will awaken and say, this is not of God. Cut it off. If, do you have that kind of spirit? All right? The overpowering spirit to overpower sin, overpower temptation is in the Lord's prayer. Lead us not into temptation. Because you have the spirit within you. But what happened to God and the Eden? This is what happened. Spirit no more. Alright? So the spirit died. The spirit died. Now this is very, very important. Going back to this. In Isaiah 14 verses 12 to 14. It says, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground. You who weakened the nations, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. On the further sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. You know, the devil, the devil, his strategy, he is throne conscious. He's throne conscious. So we have two thrones. One is the spirit, all right? There's a throne and a spirit. And there's another throne, the throne of our soul. The throne of our soul is our minds. And he wants to take care, take over the mind. Just like what he wanted to take, the throne of God, in the heavens. So, he's throne conscious until today. He will want to take the throne of our soul, of our mind. The moment he can take the throne of our souls, which is the mind, then you'll manipulate the spirit. And the spirit will become weakened. His job is deactivate the spirit so that the spirit will not be able to function and you'll begin to fall into sin. And who's going to fall into the sin? That body. The body will follow. Oh, now, now, now my boss is the soul. He's telling me, all right, to <clears throat> fall into the sin. All right, to hate this person. All right, to betray this person. And that's how he does. And that's the reason why whenever you do deliverance, all right, whenever you do deliverance, you must be very strong in the spirit because you're going to go and deliver the person, that person, he, even though he's a believer, his mind, his soul has been taken over by the enemy. And you need to dethrone the strong man in his mind before the person is delivered and the spirit becomes to function again. Now many, many Christians, they like to play the same game. One moment live in the spirit, one more live in the soul. Sunday live in the spirit, Monday to Friday live in the soul. Alright? Alright? That's why Jesus said you can't serve two masters, right? In the book of Matthew 6, 25, he said no, it's not about the God and money. Because he said God is talking about the spirit. When you talk about money, you're talking about when you move by your soul, put money before God, you are going to be in trouble. He said you can't serve two masters. You can't be in the sitting on the fence. You're either for God or not for God, that's it. Now you, you, you're going to be very surprised in these last days. 
right in the last days in the book of Matthew 25, the parable of the ten virgins, five were wise. The, why they were wise? They had the oil, they had the lamb and the oil. The, another five were foolish because why? They had the lamb but no oil. So when, when, when the bridegroom came, right, when the bridegroom came, now you see the foolish, the foolish uh, virgin, they went and asked, went and asked the wise virgin, give us some oil because our, 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 our land is going on. And what did the wise virgin tell, uh, tell, tell these foolish virgins? They did not say, I pity you, no, I'll give you some, you know, we can share. They said, no, I can't share with you because I also will not have enough there. They were so affirmative. The affirmative in Christianity all right, cannot be compromised with the doctrine of grace. Because they said, be graceful, graceful, never mind, never mind. But it came to a point where even the, even the wise virgin told the foolish virgin, no, I can't give you the oil. You won't get yourself. That's the point of the last days. When we don't move in the spirit, we don't learn to live in the spirit, walk in the spirit, someday we'll get caught. It's a matter of time. And I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart, I love you all. But from my experience, I'll just share this experience. The father brought the son to pray for the son. My wife and me we prayed of his <clears throat> prayed for him. He was uh, uh, he was uh, studying in the unison. And the Lord impressed upon me, my wife said, Hey. You better cut off this relationship with this person. It's not working. It's not. It's just that it's not. Is 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 unequally yoked. And I just told him because the pastor. You know, sometimes they want the pastor to be lived by grace, you know, forgive. But when the word of God comes, I release that word into the person. But what the father, the mother, they were not happy with me. How can pastor you talk to my son like this? You know, we are going church, going and so on. Nothing will happen. Why you say? I want you, I say, stop the relationship. Irrespective, huh? come to ministry, friends, father, mother, or secondary. God's servant is we are servant to our God. There's no there's no pity. Pity, yeah, we pray. I, I remember I released the word on, on Wednesday. Friday, God impressed upon me, called his family to the house to pray for them also. I called, they did not come. And Saturday evening, uh, Saturday morning, he died. In an accident. He died in an accident. Alright? Because you see, when, when the word of God is released, there's grace. But you don't know what how long God's grace is. You don't know how long God's grace is. You don't know you're living by the minute, by the hour, by the day, by the week, or by the month. I remember when God told me, Go see the sick guy. I went. Alright, this guy is a Christian. He is not prepared to meet me. Be with him, minister to him. When he's ready, I'll take him. So I had to minister to him. Minister to him in the area of repentance and he was so a lot of bitterness and so on. And after one year, God took him. Sometimes, sometimes we need to understand the devil is after the throne of our soul. Don't give him one inch. The work and the ministry of the church is also important. They are vehicles to take you close so that you fulfill your purpose in Jesus. So the church is not yet to waste time. I believe the church is seeing every ministry here is to empower your spirit through the Holy Spirit. Today many, many live in the soul, but they want to do the works of God. They live in the soul, but they want the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is not going to come until you, unless you are living in your spirit. Unless you're living by your spirit, not your soul, he will not compromise. Are you all okay? This is what a uh, uh, conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. I just put in verse 5 to 7, where Jesus said, The spirit, the spirit, we have to be born of the spirit. So, what I'm driving this morning is activate the spirit. Don't give root to the soul, so that you will find a fulfillment. You'll find your joy in serving. You'll find your joy as a follower of Jesus Christ. You'll never want to go back into that, that area of the soul. The soul is important. But know how to manage your soul through your spirit. So Jesus is not only calling us today to be born of the spirit. 
but he's also calling us to live and walk in the spirit in these last days now we need to understand in the book of Matthew chapter 4 Jesus himself was about to be tempted by by the devil right after his 40 days of fasting what the, what the devil did the, you know, the devil was very smart the devil was trying to do he was trying to do this strategy oh if I can bring down Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden now I'm going to bring down Jesus using the same strategy so what the devil did in the book of Matthew 4 4 all right the devil said oh Jesus after after fasting 40 days you're hungry all right why don't you turn this 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 uh, stone into bread what did Jesus say it is written Man shall not live by bread alone, but for every word that proceeded cometh forth from the mouth of God. <coughs> so the devil was after Jesus' body. Just now, how he is after Eve's body in the garden of Eden. Oh, he could not beat, alright, he cannot bring down Jesus' body. So he went to the next strategy, right, Matthew 4 7. And Matthew 4 7, what did he say? Alright? He said, oh, we go to the pinnacle and jump to the pinnacle of the temple. You know, you become popular because the angel will save you. And then everyone will be follow you. But Jesus said, what? Alright, do not put, the, put God to test. Do not test the Lord your God. And then the third test. So, he wanted to go for Jesus, so could not. Then he wanted to go for the Spirit in Jesus. So he told Jesus, alright, you want every part of this world? Then bow down and worship. And what Jesus replied in the book of Matthew 4, 10. He said, what? You should only worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. So Jesus was uh, Jesus defeated all right, the devil, what the devil did to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis. So today, you must come to the conclusion, I want to live by my spirit and no more by the soul. You know the soul is the, the soul is so important in the last days the devil knows so it comes to multimedia comes to your youtube comes through the movies they don't carry a sword outside in God. very harmless but it's to demean and deactivate your spirit so that you continue to function in your soul so today you can do ministry without the spirit do a lot of things you do a lot of things but your character will show. Your character will show whether you're living by the spirit or by the soul. You cannot cheat God. You cannot cheat God. And this morning, I just want to encourage every one of us. Stop living in this. Where you give all the, 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 the kingship to the soul. And this is what when Jesus said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Because who was in control? The soul is controlling this is what, what Jesus meant when he was talking to his disciples. Few hours before he was arrested. Can you imagine? Few hours he was arrested and all of them were living in the soul. The spirit was there. Today you are born again. Your spirit is there. But is the spirit activated? Is the spirit taking over the soul? The soul took over. So book of Zechariah, I'm sure that all of us know the scripture. The answer is said to me, this is the word of the Lord to zero people, not by mind, not by power, but by my spirit. Amen. This is the condition we should be living in. Giving the power man, the body man to our spirit. So whenever we talk about Holy Spirit, alright, you know where is our spirit man? It's a belly, right? Right? You can see that in the book of John chapter 7, verse 38. What did Jesus say? From the belly, from your belly shall flow rivers of living water. From your belly. Not from your head. Not from your ears, from your eyes. Not from your hands. It is from your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this morning, come to the last conclusion here. Paul put it very nicely. Reuniting our purpose in Christ in this last days is not his word, it's my word. When living and walking in the spirit death, this is his word. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23 May your whole spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus comes, 
He's not going to ask you how many ministries you did. He's not going to tell you how many cars you have, how many houses you have, what's your bank account balance. He wants to see the condition of our spirit, soul and body. There's a difference between blameless and sinless. You know that all of us, we cannot be sinless, only Jesus. Okay. So, the next word Paul used was blameless. So the condition of spirit, soul and body, the divine order, is so, so important in the last days because the devil is going to push and push so that you live in your soul and you're not live in the spirit so that you can be easily defeated. All of us. It's a reminder for us to activate. So we talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. When you talk about doing ministry in the church, make sure that my spirit is nourished. My spirit is empowered in every area of my ministry. If it's not, you're in trouble. If you're not, you're in trouble. So get this right. So those are looking for a marriage partner, make sure that you find someone living in this. Not this, huh? The other, not the other one. Make sure you find a marriage partner. Husband and wife, make sure that you're living. Husband and wife, whenever you're, 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 you're living, make sure that the spirit is on power. Don't the wife live by the spirit? Husband live by the soul, then you have problem. But not, not to say that, oh, you go, go divorce and so on. That's why you go for counseling. Counselors must be living in the spirit. Counsel in the spirit. So that you, you live both. You bring the unity. This is why. Alright? I'm going to close here. I'm going to pray this morning. Is it okay, doctor? Alright, I'm going to close here. And this is what Paul reminds us in the book of 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Let's keep our spirit, soul and body. That does not mean that you take care of your spirit, you know, because sometimes to take care of the spirit, soul and body, you need to serve. Involve in the ministry. Whatever ministry comes. Whatever you do, don't, don't ask a position. Let the Holy Spirit speak to your spirit and then do. Sometimes you need to do ushering, do ushering. Clean your toilet, do the cleaning the toilet. Don't want title and position. Because anointing, no respecter. Alright? Joseph. Joseph lived by his spirit. He was, what a slave. He was a prisoner. In the, alright, a prisoner. But yet, God favored him. He was about to fall into a trap. Alright, by Potiphar's wife. And he ran. Why did, why Joseph ran? Because he knew the devil was after his body by using Potiphar's wife to come after his body. So the leg was activated, run. Because the spirit was, the fuse was coming off. Alright, the alarm went off. The alarm bells went off in the spirit, run. He ran. And uh, a, a slave, a prisoner can become a prime minister in a non-believers country in Egypt. Today they complain. Oh, let's run to another country and stay. When Joseph alone, all right, he did not have a pastor to talk to him about this. Joseph took care of his spirit well. To the point, all right, to the point he became the prime minister. If he can do it, how much more we can do it? Amen. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah.